Okay, so today we'll be going over an introduction to dental imaging examinations. This is on chapter 16 of your dental radiography textbook. So first let's go over some objectives for this chapter. So number one is to define the key terms associated with dental imaging examinations. List three types of intraoral imaging examinations and describe the purpose, the type of receptors, and the technique used for each of the three types of intraoral imaging examinations. List the various projections that constitute a complete mouth series, otherwise known as a full mouth series or FMX or FMS or CMS. We'll list the general diagnostic criteria for intraoral images. We'll list the examples of extraoral imaging exams, discuss the, pres the prescribing of dental images, describe when prescribing a CMS for a new patient is warranted. So the purpose of this chapter is to introduce the dental radiographer to the different intraoral radiographic examinations used in dentistry. Also to define the complete mouth series and what that looks like, to describe in detail the diagnostic criteria of intraoral images. In addition, we'll go over some extraoral imaging exams that are used in dentistry. So we'll also go over some types of intraoral or several types of, of intraoral examinations, um, which include the complete mouth series, um, as well as some diagnostic criteria for intraoral images. So intraoral image examination is an inspection used to examine the teeth in intraoral adjacent structures. Such intraoral examinations are the foundation of dental imaging. And we usually use, or well, we will use an intraoral receptors, which are placed inside the mouth. An intraoral film is the most commonly used x-ray receptor. Um, and nowadays, of course, we use um, digital imaging, which uh, requires the use of a sensor. So the three types of intraoral imaging examinations are a periapical exam, an interproximal examination, as well as an occlusal examination. Each of these examinations has a certain purpose and requires the use of a specific type of imaging receptor and technique. So the purpose of the periapical examination is to, is to examine the entire tooth, which includes the crown, and root as well as a supporting bone. And the type of imaging receptor that is used is a, a type of periapical receptor. And the techniques that can be used are either paralleling as well as bisecting. And the, the word peri, periapical um, is derived from the Greek prefix peri, which means around, and the Latin word apex referring to the terminal end of the tooth root. An interproximal examination uh, is used to examine the crowns of both maxillary and mandibular teeth on a single image. As the term proximal suggests, the examination is useful in examining adjacent to surfaces as well as the crestal bone. The type of imaging receptor that you'll use is a bite wing receptor. And the technique is the only type is the bite wing technique. So this film is most often taken to check for cavities between the teeth. The occlusal examination is used to examine large areas of the maxilla or the mandible on one image. The occlusal receptor is used in occlusal examinations. And as the word, as the term occlusal suggests, the patient occludes or bites on this type of receptor. And then the technique that is used is um, the occlusal technique. And that's the, really the only type that can be used with this type of x-ray. So this type of film is most commonly seen in pediatric dental offices. The reason being is a lot of uh, pediatric patients are too small and they can't really tolerate biting on a bite wing sensor or um, any type of uh, imaging like that. So the best we can do is have them bite on a piece of film um, and then we'll take a, what we call an occlusal image that way. A complete mouth series, also known as a full mouth series, 
Um, the, abbreviate, the abbreviation can be a CMS, an FMS, or an FMX. And the CMS can be defined as a series of intraoral dental images that show all of the tooth bearing areas of both jaws. So tooth bearing areas uh, are the regions of the upper and lower jaw where all 32 teeth of the human dentition are usually located. Tooth bearing areas include dentulous areas, which exhibit teeth, as well as edentulous areas uh, where the teeth are no longer present. So this series can include only periapicals or be a combination of periapicals and bite wings. A total of 14 to 20 films may be taken, but in a more modern setting, it's usually 18, um, 18 films or 18 x-rays. The film size selection is important. And usually for this type of series, we'll take, we'll use the size number two. Um, and older days or older offices, they used to use the size one film for taking anterior uh, x-rays, uh, but that's not a very common sensor size. And if your office is a little more modern and it's, they're using uh, digital radiography, um, it's usually gonna be either a size two or a size zero for pediatric patients. And this is used to detect disease, foreign objects, and uh, retain roots. Patients usually have a full mouth series of x-rays taken every three to five years. So the diagnostic criteria for intraoral images include images that have optimum density, contrast, definition, and detail. And the way we can control this is by setting the correct KVP settings, as well as the MA settings and exposure time. Images must also have the least amount of distortion as possible. So this means make, taking the correct bisecting angles, uh, making sure your film isn't bent in the mouth when you're taking films, um, and also making sure that the correct angulation is used. The CMS must include images that show all tooth bearing areas, and periapical images must show the entire crowns and roots of the teeth being examined, as well as two to three millimeters beyond the root apices. Biving images must show open contacts. An extra, an extra oral imaging examination um, basically means uh, x-ray where the receptor is placed outside of the mouth. And this is usually an inspection of large areas of the skull or jaws. And some of the examples of an extra oral image is, uh, would be a, either a panoramic image, a lateral jaw, a lateral cephal cephalometric, which is basically like a profile picture, um, a posterior anterior, and something called a waters image. So a waters image is basically um, a cephalometric image, except you're asking your patient to lift their chin all the way up um, and I think the I think it's like 37 degrees up into the air. So all images are prescribed based on the individual needs of the patient. Dentists use their professional judgment and experience to make decisions about the number, the type, and the frequency of dental images. So it's important to know that not all patients need an, a CMS or an FMX. A CMS is appropriate only when a new adult patient presents with clinical evidence of generalized dental disease or a history of extensive dental treatment. So that means a patient that um, comes in for some type of symptoms and they have some obvious uh, dental work that needs to be done or they have a history of dental work, in which case x-rays will need to be taken to make sure that one, the, the work is still maintaining it inside the mouth and it's still functional, and also to make sure that there's no recurrent decay underneath those, uh, those restorations. Otherwise, a combination of bite wings, selected periapicals, 
and or a panoramic image should be prescribed on the basis of a patient's individual needs. All right, and that's it for this chapter. Um, as always, please email me if you have any questions or feel free to ask me in class. Thank you, see you soon.